A massive warehouse in Spain packed floor to ceiling with lithium ion batteries erupted into chaos. It forced tens of thousands of residents to shelter indoors. And honestly, it makes you wonder whether these companies storing lithium ion batteries really understand how dangerous they can be. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. As explosions rocked the industrial park, firefighters faced an impossible question. How do you stop a fire when the fuel is packed into batteries? This is the hidden risk that's spreading anywhere we store end-of-life batteries. And most people, they don't even realize it exists. On July 4th, 2025, in a town about 50 kilometers, uh, 31 miles northeast of Madrid, residents got a rude wake-up call. Their phones blared out the message from the Civil Protection Authority, and it warned them to close their windows, seal off ventilation, and stay indoors. Outside, a thick black column of toxic smoke it was rising into the sky. If you look at the aerial photos or the drone footage from that morning, you'll see an enormous industrial building completely consumed by fire, with flames already through the roof. This wasn't a recycling plant in the sense that they were actively dismantling or processing batteries. It was primarily a collection and storage warehouse, a place where thousands of damaged, end-of-life, or defective lithium-ion batteries were consolidated and sorted before being shipped off to a more specialized facility that actually does the recycling. And that distinction matters because when you stockpile that many questionable batteries in a single building, you're essentially creating a disaster waiting to happen. And that's something that we've been seeing more and more. Companies popping up overnight, claiming to recycle lithium-ion batteries, but when you look into the details, they're really just a collection point. In some cases, they're playing the market, stockpiling the batteries until the price is right so they can sell them for a profit. That might work in the scrap metal industry, but when you start looking at stockpiling lithium-ion batteries, there's a significant hazard. It's easy to assume that batteries only fail when they're in use, when you're charging your bike or running your cordless drill, or even driving your electric car. But the reality is, these batteries can degrade internally over time, they can develop hidden faults, or get physically damaged in transport. And when one cell goes into thermal runaway, that's all it takes. It's violent, venting flammable gas, releasing an intense amount of heat, and it triggers a massive chain reaction. But when those batteries are now stored inside of sealed 55-gallon drums, that failure can quickly turn into an explosion. Once that starts, containing it inside a closed structure becomes nearly impossible without dedicated suppression systems designed specifically for high hazards. And in this case, all signs point to the building not having that kind of protection in place. But if they did, the system either failed or simply wasn't designed for the scale of the hazard inside. Firefighters arriving on scene were immediately confronted with a well-involved structure fire with repeated explosions. This wasn't a localized event, just involving a pallet. By the time the crews got there, the fire had already spread across most of the facility and fire was through the roof. Due to the size of the structure and the contents inside, it's starting off as a defensive fire right away. There were two people injured, but thankfully there were no fatalities reported. And local authorities issued a shelter in place for about 60,000 of the town's residents. The fire continued to burn for over three days. These fires produced dense, toxic smoke. We're not just talking about regular products of combustion. Lithium-ion battery smoke contains things like hydrogen, large quantities of carbon monoxide, and small amounts of metals and organic compounds that you don't want in your lungs. That's why the authorities were so quick to tell people to seal up their homes and stay put. There's also something else worth pointing out, the regulatory gaps when it comes to these collection facilities. In many parts of the world, Battery storage sites aren't really regulated as hazardous material facilities, more like traditional warehouses. The difference is you can store a pallet of plastic, consumer goods in a warehouse, and reasonably expect your sprinkler system to control the fire. But when your inventory is thousands of batteries, each with its own stored chemical energy, oxygen supply, the potential for explosion you're playing by a completely different set of rules. And whether your local code recognizes it or not, end-of-life batteries really should be stored outside, isolated in smaller piles, and they really need to be protected from the weather. We often focus on the front end, 
manufacturing, selling, and using battery-powered devices. But there's a whole life cycle that follows. The collection, the transport, and recycling of batteries that no longer are useful or safe. If you look at the growth curve of electric vehicles, e-bikes, and power tools, you'll see a tidal wave of end-of-life batteries coming down the pipeline. And we're just now starting to see the problems associated with their collection. We don't even have the infrastructure to safely handle all that material. In many places, it just isn't there yet. The fire in Spain is likely to result in a long investigation. Officials will look at how the batteries were packaged, how much volume was stored, and whether there was an automatic suppression system in place. Were there emergency plans up to date? My bet is some combination of all these factors contributed to why that fire spread so fast and burned so long. It's not like anyone in the industry wants this to happen, but when you're storing batteries like this in a warehouse, you've got a big problem on your hands, and you better not underestimate that risk. If you look back at other battery storage and recycling fires in the last few years, places like Morris, Illinois, Drecton in the Netherlands, and even smaller incidents in the UK, you'll see the same pattern over and over again. A damaged or degraded battery initiates thermal runway, the fire spreads quickly to adjacent batteries, and responders are forced into defensive operations that last for days. For now, the fire is out, the smoke is dissipated, and the community is trying to return to normal. But the real work is in the cleanup. And then we need to figure out how to keep this from happening again. Because if there's one thing incidents like this prove, it's that storing and handling lithium-ion batteries isn't business as usual. And the sooner we recognize that, the better prepared we'll be to keep people safe in the future.